Always a pleasure to welcome Sama Shahata to Al Jazeera. He's joining us via Skype from Norman, Oklahoma. Sama is Associate Professor of Middle East Politics at the University of Oklahoma. Um, it's difficult to see this summit going well, isn't it? I'm thinking of the last time there was something similar. There was an Arab League summit and it just descended into shouting, basically, and people saying, well, if you're going to talk, I'm going to talk. And it's, it's, it doesn't bode well, does it? Well, yes, I'm also not optimistic. Of course, this is different than the Arab League summit for a couple of reasons. One, it's in Kuwait, and of course, Sheikh, the Emir Sabah, has been trying to mediate for quite some time. So it would it's certainly more important for him to have at least not everything collapse and be a disaster. Uh, but yes, I'm also not optimistic for a number of reasons. And the UAE and Saudi Arabia have not really indicated their willingness to engage in serious negotiations or see this crisis to a resolution. As it stands, do... Well, what are the demands? Remember, we had the initial 13, 12 or 13 demands that were issued by the blockading countries at the start of the crisis. Do those still stand, really? Is that what uh, the countries want? Well, some of those demands still stand. And I think you're right to point to the confusion because, you know, initially, in fact, it wasn't that. Remember, there were the allegations about the emir's alleged remarks at a graduation ceremony for military cadets in Qatar. And we know that was, of course, false. The, the, the website was hacked into and so on. So it is a bit confusing. And the real issues are not what they appear. Certainly, I think Saudi Arabia and the UAE feel threatened by Qatar's uh, assertive foreign policy and its foreign policy orientation. So that is one key issue, and it has to do with not supporting um, authoritarian regimes or Qatar's favored attitude towards the Arab uprisings. And, and Saudi Arabia and the UAE feel threatened by that. And certainly Al Jazeera is part of the story. Uh, they are threatened by Al Jazeera and by media and by potential criticism of governments and, and, and rulers and so on. So I think those are the real issues. And terrorism is a very nice term to use to get attention and to get everybody on your side, because who can be against terrorism? Who can be for terrorism? As you pointed out, Kuwait is the host, and Kuwait has been the country that has been trying to mediate. Has there been any tangible signs that Kuwait has made any progress in that mediation? No, sort of, is the answer. <laughs> okay. uh, I think the answer is no. You're right, that we really haven't seen, you know, any breakthroughs or any even kind of goodwill gestures on the part of Saudi Arabia or the UAE and so on. Qatar has tried, I would say. But there is a hint that when Sheikh Sabah was with Donald Trump at a press conference in Washington, D.C., at the end of his official visit, he indicated, he implied that it was because of his efforts that a military dimension to this conflict was averted. And so I think that he has been a voice of reason, and he has been someone who has kind of constrained uh, the Saudi and Emiratis over-aggressive policies with regard to this and, as you know, with regard to other issues in the region. I'm thinking of Yemen in particular. Samashata, always good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.